y'all this is Amanda and welcome back to my Texas Zone 8 a garden and today we're gonna to be doing a lot of seed starting specifically focusing on hardy annuals that I can start from seed now plant into my fall garden over winter and then it will give me a jump start on blooms in the spring So years ago, I discovered this book called Cool Flowers, and it is by Lisa Mason Ziegler. And Lisa Mason Ziegler actually still does lots of um, classes online. So online classes where you can learn about flowers and growing and all that kind of stuff. They're great. If you haven't followed her, like on Facebook, she puts a lot of great stuff up on there. So make sure you do that. But this book is just pure gold. Now I will say, I feel like this book is kind of hard to find at this point, but I will say there's lots of information online. And then if you take some of Lisa's classes, that's helpful too. But basically this book is about cool flowers, which are flowers, like I said, the beginning that we start from seed now we plant in our garden in the fall and they overwinter and then we get a jump start on them in the spring these are not perennials these are hardy annuals so they're annuals that do fine with cold weather you know and then over the winter they're not really growing very much but they're growing down below lots of roots down low and then come spring they're already so well established that we get an earlier cycle of blooms for them and with the early Earlier cycle we get a stronger cycle of blooms because they've had all this that's extra time to grow their root systems which is going to produce a better plant in the end so the book is really cool it has a lot of information about starting each of your hardy annuals and then um, it goes over all the hardy, hardy annuals specifically so you can read about each one talks about the best time to start them what's best for your zone things along those lines now, Lisa Mason Ziegler has improved on this and there's more hardy annuals that she suggests now. Those are all online through her classes, so you can check those out as well. I'm going to be starting um, a wide variety today. Um, I'm not starting every one in, um, in the book, but I am starting some that I've started before and some that are new to me this year. So what I want to do today is we're going to be starting them in seed trays back here. And then I want to show you how I'm starting each one and talk about each of the seeds and I'll put up photos of what they're going to look like when they're in full bloom. So I'm just starting with the standard potting soil. This is my BM7 potting soil that I use that I get from um, Homegrown in Farmersville. It's very light and very fluffy, which is why I feel like it's also okay for seed starting. I've started thousands of seeds with it at this point now, and they've all done really, really well. And, you know, truthfully, I'll give you a seedling update. I just did a potting up. Um, not long ago, so I'll show you how all that stuff is looking. So basically what I'm going to be doing, I think this time I'm going to use my Vigo containers. These are my Vigo seed starting cells. And basically what I'm going to be doing is I'm starting with the dry soil, which I know a lot of people are like, what? That just works best for me to start with dry soil. And I'm going to go ahead and get several of these filled up, layering them in with the dry soil, giving it a little shake. And then I use a couple of fingers to kind of gently compress it. The center portion of these is open. Okay, the first cool flower or hardy annual I'm going to be starting with is a foxglove. And I have grown these using this cool flowers method many times at this point, and it always works out great. I feel like they actually, for foxglove, I actually see a lot of growth on them during the cool season. But basically, I start them off now, and then when they're little bitty seedlings, I put them out. They do a little bit of growing, and they do actually grow quite a bit over the winter season. It's considered a short-lived perennial slash biennial, so every year I feel like I lose a few of them. And then some of them come back and I mean it's kind of all over the place but I do make sure I start some every year it's definitely beneficial for me to start them now than if I just start them in the middle of the winter this works way better and I get far more prolific plants these are very simple to sow in that they need light so they're really just surface sow 
And so what I'll do is, these are very, very tiny seeds. I'm basically just going to put a couple on the top of um, each one. I think I'm going to do, how many seeds do I have? 50 seeds. I think I'm going to do two containers of these. And this is a Camelot mix. So it's a mix of colors. Okay, I've got two in each shell, and these do have um, a coating on them. It's called pelleted, and it's got a coating on them because it's, they're so small, but once the coating gets wet, it dissolves very, very quickly. So I started with dry soil. This is one of the reasons I like dry soil is because now I can go and kind of push them down and make sure they have really great contact without it sticking to my fingers. And both of these will get a humidity dome, just like this. And then I've got just a tray, a seed starting tray. And the thing about the Vigo is they have all of these spaces in between these like open air spaces to suck up water, but also encourage uh, root growth. So um, basically I'll just, once I've got all the seeds ready, I'll put them all in here and then I will add water to here um, and all of this will soak up from below. Now this particular foxglove um, is about 28 to 48 inches tall. These foxglove are poisonous. All parts of the plants are poisonous as well. So don't plant this in your garden if you have any worries. Yes, I do have um, dogs that they don't mess with um, my gardening stuff. So it's hasn't been a concern in the last 10 years and it's not something I've had to deal with um, so that's been fine and then uh, for the seeds it takes them about 14 to 21 days for germination now one seed I'm going to start today is delphinium and I love delphinium they're absolutely beautiful this will be my first time starting in the fall and then trying to overwinter it I have not had been able to do that in the past I've just started them in the winter and then grew them on but I find that it takes them so long to get going that by the time they're really going it's hot in my area and they don't do as well because they do prefer the cooler temps. Now the thing with delphinium is it's better to soak the seeds. So I'm going to show you what method I'm going to utilize for that. They're not actually going to get planted in the seed cells today but I'll show you what I'm going to do to prep them to be planted in their seed cells. So to start this method, I'm going to need a um, Ziploc bag and then I'm going to need a wet paper towel. This is like four or five pieces of the paper towel. And basically I'm going to take my seeds and this particular one is Magic Fountain's Mixed Delphinium. And I'm going to spread out some of my seeds on one side of the paper towel. Delphinium, I have trouble with delphinium a lot um, regarding germination. Okay. And um, this method helps a lot. Basically, it moistens the outside of the seed and allows it to germinate easier. Um, and I'm also going to be putting it in the refrigerator to give it a little bit of cold spell. So you can see I've got my seeds. I'm going to fold this over just like this. And then I'm going to open my Ziploc bag. And I'm going to put that in just like that. So we'll do this one this way. I'm going to press it down flat. So everybody has really good contact with the moist. And then this is going to go into the refrigerator for two weeks. Now let's do a little bit of experiment. So I put that set, the Magic Fountains mix, into the refrigerator. I do have this other one, which is a Magic Fountains, but it's specifically the Lilac Pink White Bee. So let's go ahead and do just a standard process with this, where we put it in the containers and it goes just about the process of everything else. Now Delphinia needs darkness, so you are going to want to make sure that you sink your, so uh, your seed down and then cover it with soil. I'm not talking a lot, I'm talking maybe about a quarter inch. Now these take about 10 to 20 days for germination. So I'm just going to start by putting a couple of seeds in each seed cell. 
One thing about these delphinium is in my area, they don't last into the hot weather. So one thing I've been meaning to do as I've learned that process is I would really like to jam pack where I'm planting them. I just would really like to jam pack some areas with these plants, knowing that they're gonna grow up, fill in, bloom, and then I'm just gonna have to rip them out and I can replace them with something else. It's different when I'm having to plan for something more permanent, but I won't have to do that in this case. So I'm gonna go ahead and press these down. I'm gonna do a little bit of light soil across the top, and then I think I'm gonna add some vermiculite and vermiculite will just help maintain the moisture and then also aid in the darkness on here. And the vermiculite I'm using is the star green. So basically I'm just coming across like this. And I am putting it on pretty heavy because like I said, delphinium seeds, they need darkness. I use, um, the vermiculite on my lisianthus seedlings as well. All right, just like that. And then once again, these will get humidity domes just like this. And then they'll go into the tray and we'll be watering from below. Okay, the next ones I'm gonna be starting are lupin. A lot of y'all, when I originally bought these seeds, I said lupine and you guys and you guys corrected me. And so these are lupin um, and I saw these when I traveled in Canada um, and they just grow wild and they're ridiculous. And a lupin that does well in my area is called a blue bonnet, a Texas blue bonnet. So it's kind of a similar idea and effect. I have tried to grow these before, but I did not grow them with purpose. I just toss some seeds out and nothing happened. Shocker, right? <laughs> so these are really cool, tall, spectacular looking flowers. Um, about, I got two varieties. One is called Band of Nobles, mixed colors. These are about three to three and a half um, feet tall. And then I got a miniature dwarf mix, which is only about 20 inches tall. And um, these are winter hardy to zone four and considered a perennial. I, and they can be grown as a fall planted hardy annual where summers are hot which is perfect description for my area. Okay, so these need to be soaked overnight. So what I'll be doing is I'll be, oh, there's a flower in there. Is I'm gonna soak them overnight and then I'll come back and show you guys at the end of this video. I'll add these in and get these planted. They also need to be nicked because the outside of the seed is so hard. So I'm gonna go get basically some nail clippers to do that. Now, another way of kind of nicking a seed is you can run it over some sandpaper. But let's give this a try. Seeds are pretty big. So this is what the seeds look like. Truthfully, if you're in my area, they kind of look like little ticks. Um, so basically, I'm just going to come in and I'm just going to kind of nick them a little bit with the edge of my um, clippers and then toss them in. I have eight cells and I'd like to put two cells in, or two seeds in each cell. And I'm literally just clipping the end of it, I'm not trying to break it in half. I'm just kind of nicking the edge of it. Okay, so I've got that right there and my, my marker is waterproof. Um, so I've got 16 in there, so I'm gonna let those soak. And then I'm gonna do the dwarf variety really quick. Okay, and we'll soak both of these overnight, and then at the end of the day, I'll come back and plant them. Okay, the next one we're gonna do is straw flower, and I started straw flower many times, and it's done a wonderful. So um, it is just these really cool, vibrant, beautiful flowers that are papery, and they dry really well. They're great, and they love the heat of the summer, which is awesome too. <laughs> these are pretty easy to start. They need light for germination, so we're just gonna be surface sowing them. And they do take about 10 to 20 days for germination. Um, it says they can be direct sowed. I've never done direct sowing with them in the past. And this variety is the Swiss Giants Mix straw flower. And the seeds are really tiny, so I'm just gonna put a few in each container.
and I'm going to just lightly press them to make sure that they have really great contact with the soil. And these will both get humidity domes. Okay, the next variety I'm going to start is called Godisha, and this variety is gray salmon, so a very cool color. And um, it is about 18 to 24 inches tall. This is the first time I'm going to be growing it, and then of course now I'm going to be growing it as a hardy annual or cool flower. So it says that basically it is going to be covered with just a sixteenth, a one sixteenth of soil. Um, it doesn't say whether it needs light or not. Um, it just says to keep the soil surface. It says gently press seeds into soil cover with 1 16th of soil and keep it moist until they emerge it takes about five to ten days for germination which I love when they have a quick germination because I can tell real quick if I did something wrong or if I did it right these are awesome cut flowers I've used them in the florist world quite frequently so I'll be really excited if I'm actually able to grow these so what I think I'm going to do with these is I'm going to, instead of covering them with the soil, I'm going to cover them with the vermiculite. Now the soil um, will suck up this water real quick. I'm gonna probably put in two full pitchers and these are about a gallon each. And then I'm gonna check on them to make sure that all the soil is moist. This works way better with um, regular potting soil than it does with seed starter. Seed starter mix just doesn't soak up water very well and you definitely want to pre-mix that with water. Okay, let me fill some new trays. We are switching to my Amazon seed starting trays, which are have quickly become my favorite. I like them a lot. If you're interested, they're in my uh, Amazon storefront and there's a link in the video description to that. I have dried hydrangea petals everywhere. <laughs> so the first variety we're going to be starting is called April in Paris Sweet Pea. And basically these need to be soaked about one to three hours. They said in lukewarm water. And they're pretty big. Um, I'm wondering, y'all let me know. I've never grown sweet pea before. This is my first time with it. If I should be putting a nick in it. The book doesn't suggest that I put a nick in it. Um, it just says that I should soak them. So I've got 12 slots. So I'm going to do 12 um, seedlings of each of them. So I'm going to put 24 in. And sweet peas are kind of a vining plant. They prefer to grow in cooler weather. So once the heat hits, these will be gone in my area. But they're really great for harvest. This next variety is called <clears throat> Mermaid's Dream. And then we'll let these soak and then I will come back and plant these in a couple of hours. Okay, let's do a little review of all the seedlings I currently have going. Down here is a lot of violas and pansies. Some of them are a little dry, so I need to get them going, but everybody's up and growing and looking really good. These two were some of the last ones to finally sprout. So this is the pansy brushstrokes and the viola cool summers. And then up here, I have some scarlet kale. Um, germination wasn't great on it, so I only have a few. And even truthfully, that looks like a basil. That doesn't look like <laughs> kale. So I only have like three or four in there. Next is oh, something falling. This is Razel, the red uh, basil red reuben. It's looking really, really good. This one is Tiny to Melissa. This one right here is the mustard, the Japanese giant mustard. All these feel like they need to be watered. This is Green Dragon Crest. And this right here is the kale, um, I think it was called Japanese 
flowered. And that one's looking really good. And then I had to set up a second rack because I the ones I'm potting up needed more room. So over here we have our tip top mahogany nasturtium doing pretty well over here. And lots of basil doing great mammoth basil. This right here is um, it's Zanzibar. Then right here I've got petite yellow marigolds. Let me get down here. Over here I've got clover, crimson red clover. These right here are Vulcan Swiss chard. Some of them are, don't look great, but then some of them look really good. I've also got over here, and they look like they're maybe kind of burning a little bit. I don't know. They look a little weird. I think that is the spicy saber basil. See how like some of the leaves look like this? Huh. Okay, we'll keep an eye on that. Then down here are my Lysianthus, and you can see all of them are up, looking good. Now remember with Lysianthus, you want them to allow them to dry out a touch before watering them in between. And then I have more sets of violas and pansies down here. Everybody's looking good, but I think I'm going to go in and water everything real quick. Okay, so we are post child orthodontist appointment getting kids back to school and this is in between me trying to go get other kids pick them up kids from school so we've got our sweet peas and they've been soaking about two and a half hours and these are sewn about an inch deep so we'll go about an inch deep and they've swollen up a little bit well, they've been soaking. And I'm just dropping two seeds in each cell. And then for these, I just add in my water. Like that. Put my humidity dome on top, making sure it's closed, and then slide it into position. Although this guy doesn't really need um, light. But I'll just go ahead and put it up there anyway. It's very well covered with the soil. Okay, so it is the next day, and I let let the lupin soak overnight. And I mean, they may look a little bit bigger, but not a ton bigger. And it does say that I'm just going to lightly cover them. So what I'm going to do is go ahead and pull them out and place two seeds on each tray, on each seed cell. They are a heck of a lot softer. All right, and then I'm gonna press these down. Okay, and then, since these are gonna just be lightly covered, I'm gonna go ahead and use the vermiculite on them. I'm not going to go really heavy on it. Okay, so I filled the bottom part with water. Set these in. Go ahead and put my humidity domes on top, making sure that they are closed up. Okay, so we have all of that set up. I'm really happy I've got so many seeds started, some new to me seeds and some tried and true seeds. I am still uh, waiting on Bells of Ireland. I finally got some ordered, and so those are on the way. So I'll be doing those as a hearty annual as well. I don't know if I'll do them in a separate video or just on my own. But I hope you guys will take some time to really think about what hearty annuals you can start now, plant in your garden in the fall and over winter to give you a head start in the spring. And it's not necessarily about blooms coming really early. It's more of like having this really great established plant that's been growing roots for several months prior to it having to go about blooming. So that's a really kind of good way to describe it. If I have really in any really extreme uh, freezes where it's going to be I mean, probably anywhere below 
28 degrees Fahrenheit. I will probably cover a lot of these um, to help out with that. We don't see that quite often, and if we do, we don't see it for very long. So, um, but if I do see some of that, I will be covering for, you know, just so I don't damage um, those plants. Now, if some of the leaves and stuff get damaged on the top part during a freeze, they're most likely okay and their roots are still good underneath. So that's important to remember as well. But I hope you'll check out this book. Um, if you aren't able to find it to purchase, check out your local library and see if anybody has it um, as well, or Half Price Books is a good place to look too. All right, you all, as always, make sure you hit that subscribe button and that notification bell so you know my latest videos are up. And make sure you check me out on Facebook, Instagram, and TikTok. As always, she's a Mac gardener or decorator or anything else that she wants to be. Thanks, y'all.